Hi, I'm Nick Shell. It's quite possible this is the first video you've watched since subscribing, so I hope I don't disappoint you. <laughs> a lot of pressure, huh? Here's the deal. I want to make this video to help you as we try to explore the concept of being a confident person, but not being an arrogant person. Because we all, I think most people, if they could, they, they would like to become more confident. They'd like to believe in themselves more and not doubt themselves. But obviously, if you, if you go all the way down the scale, you may end up being an arrogant person that's full of yourself. And no one wants to be that person, right? I want to help navigate and help you learn to have better confidence in yourself without being arrogant. This is a system that I've been trying out myself for years now. I invented it. I've been testing it out. And I love to share it with other people because it's helped my life. Here we go. We got to start out with something called identity protective cognition. That's the belief. It's any, any belief of yours that is so much a part of you, so much a part of your emotions that if anyone says anything to attack that in any way, you feel emotionally hurt. You fire back at them. Yet anything that they say to kind of counter what you believe only reinforces what you already believe. That's identity protective cognition. And I say, I have observed, most people, at least in American culture, most people, here's what they think about themselves. This is the default identity protective cognition. Here it is. I'm a good person. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Now that's dangerous to believe that because if most people believe that they're a good person, how is it that people keep, still keep offending each other? And it's easy to perceive that people are being rude and malicious towards you, but yet they think that they're a good person. It's dangerous to think that about yourself. Most importantly for this reason, if you think, but I'm a good person, if someone does anything that could possibly offend you, you're going to feel attacked and you're going to feel a need to emotionally defend yourself. And yet anything they do or say is only going to reinforce the fact that you believe that you're a victim because you're a good person and a good person shouldn't be treated that way. You deserve better, right? So that's where I want to challenge you. And my wife will... I, I ought to bring her in a video so you, you can hear her say it herself. She told me last night, she says, Nick, you're a robot. You have the ability to shut off your emotions and not care what people think and not let them emotionally affect you. She's like, I've seen it. I know you. I live with you. I've been married to you. You're the exception of the rule. And maybe she's right. But still, I argue that it's, it's a decision to make. So instead of me saying, I'm a good person, I promise you I don't think that about myself. Instead, I think... I'm not a good person. I'm definitely not perfect. I try to be the best person I can, but I'm going to let people down. I'm not perfect. I'm not a good person. That's my default. Now, that's not a low self-esteem. It's just accepting the fact that whatever a good person means, because let's face it, that's a relative term. Everyone thinks they're a good person. So it's, it loses its meaning if everybody thinks that, isn't it? Okay. So I'm a good person. And yet I'm driving down the road and that other person thinks I either cut them off, drove too slow, didn't put my blinker on, whatever crime I committed. They honk the horn. They're cursing me out. They're flipping me off. Here's how Nick Shell reacts to that. I just keep driving. I don't even look over there. It's their problem, not mine. It's like comedian George Carlin said, I'm summarizing, paraphrasing. He basically said that every person on the road who drives faster than you is an idiot. And every person who drives slower than you is a moron. Right? So at any moment on the road while you're driving, you can easily offend someone or they can easily offend you, especially if you think that you're a good person. So I don't let those people affect me. And, and you can already see where I'm going with this. You're going to okay, well, I get, I get what you're saying. So not everyone emotionally affects you the same. Exactly. All right? So we're going to use this illustration. This is, do you recognize this is from Thomas the Train? It came with like a little plastic cow when my son was two or three years old. So... Imagine this train cart as the, we're going to let this symbolize who in your life that you allow to emotionally affect you. Do you let the entire world, can anyone at any moment affect you emotionally by anything they say? Then put them in the cart. Just put the whole world in the cart. Some of you might be hearing this and think, okay, I get what you're saying. So like on Facebook, if someone like has a big thing on Facebook where they're like talking about a religious or political view that I disagree with and they're shouting all caps and exclamation points, 
that like I can just choose to ignore that and ignore and forget about it and that's it and I don't have to emotionally be affected by that so therefore you're saying that perhaps certain people on social media you can agree okay you know what I don't have I can put them outside of the card I don't have to be emotionally affected by everything I see on social media I can just ignore it I don't have to be outraged I can ignore it and see we're starting to have a little graduation here because we're understanding that not everybody deserves to be in the cart, do they? Not everyone deserves to allow, uh, to be allowed to emotionally affect you, right? So you can draw a line in the sand. I'm not gonna let those people in there. You may you could even make a decision that you're not gonna let people emotionally affect you when you're driving on the road either. If they perceive that you did something wrong, you still feel good about yourself knowing I'm not a good person because they don't think so and they've just proved what I already feel about myself. Now, when I say that, I have a good self-esteem. But I think it's such an illusion. It's so dangerous to think that you're a good person. Because again, being a good person is an illusion. Most people think that. If most people think that, then everyone's a good person. Yet they continue to disrupt each other emotionally, right? So I don't buy into the concept that I'm a good person. I accept that about myself. And I'm very aware of my flaws. I could go on all day long about my flaws. You want me to share a few with you? Okay, sure. Um, I'm horrible at home repairs. I mean, I'm awful. Like, I can change a flat tire. I can do that. That's about it. I can change it. And, oh, I can change light bulbs. I'm just tall enough to reach the bulb here. I'm 5'9", so I'm not tall. But I can do that. I can't fix stuff, I can't make stuff, I can't repair stuff. I'm horrible at that. And I'm very aware of that. I'm not athletically inclined. Now granted, I can I run and I bike and I skateboard, but as far as like team sports, don't ever ask to put me on your team. You will not be happy about that. That that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many things that I accept about myself that I'm not good at. And they don't hurt my self-esteem. I think it actually boosts my confidence to relieve myself of knowing, hey, I can't be good at everything. In fact, I'm, I'm good at a few things. And I think that's part of confidence building too, to know what you're actually good at and to make that part of your identity. Like for me, what am I good at? I'm good at blogging. I'm good at making videos. I'm good at communicating with people. Those are things I'm good at. I make those part of my identity. As far as me trying to build a, a back deck for my wife, no, she'd beg me not to. So it's a matter of, making a conscious decision to not buy into the belief that everyone else believes, but I'm a good person because then that can't be attacked. Then I don't have anything to prove except that other people are right when they think that I'm a horrible person, they curse me out or whatever it is that I accidentally do. And granted, if I have the ability to apologize to them, even if I don't feel I'm wrong, I apologize anyway because that is gonna make their day better because my day is not emotionally affected by it. But if I somehow offend somebody, just I just apologize, and that way I can help them. Because think about this: when enemies or perceived enemies, do you really want them to be cursed? I don't. I don't want my enemies to be cursed. I want my enemies to be blessed. How can they become better people if they're not blessed? Just bad things happening to them—that's not going to help anything. I want good things to happen to my enemies, and I want my enemies to become better people. Because guess what? I'm somebody's enemy. I'm more than one person's enemy, I'm sure. Or give me a couple days and I will become that way, right? So think about this, the train card. Who do you allow to emotionally affect you? Okay, the people in the interstate who flip you off, people online who have different religious or political views. Do you let them in the cart too? Are, they, are you allowing them to emotionally affect you? Maybe we could start by removing them and saying, why am I gonna let my day have a dark cloud over, over something I saw online that somebody said or someone didn't like the goofy turn that I did on the, on the, out on the interstate. So you can choose to remove them from your wagon here. And once you can start there, you can start realizing other people don't have to emotionally affect you either. People at work. As long as you're not thinking I'm a good person, assume, you know what, I'm, I've got something to learn every day. And if Bob perceives that I am, I've, got this issue, maybe I can say, you know what? Yeah, you're right, I'm, I'm not the best at that thing. I need to work on that. Imagine what a reaction you would get. People would actually like you more. And forget about, oh, I'm a good person. Now you're becoming a better person. 
because you're being honest about this whole thing about being a good person. It's such an illusion and it's holding so many people back. Now, as for me, I've been applying this practice for years now since I invented it a couple years ago when I tested this out on YouTube and I said, please offend me. I beg you to offend me. And guess what? No one offended me. They, they, they threw some insults at me that they knew meant nothing. Because if I'm saying, hey, insult me, what's the fun in that, right? It was a way for me to test out whether people truly have uh, any emotional control over me. If there's one person that we could say at least maybe not is in the wagon, but at least leaning on it, my wife, to some degree, obviously, to make sure that there's not an emotional wall up between us, she needs to have some kind of emotional control over me. But I'll tell you this, since I've been practicing this, the number of disagreements has dropped dramatically because I realized I don't have to let that emotionally affect me, what she said. I can just go on with my day. That whole thing about picking your battles. But when you stop allowing even someone that close to you to stop emotionally controlling you about anything that they could say at any turn of the day, it gives you power back over your own life and actually improves relationships. So, in closing, I am a confident person. I don't have a low self-esteem and I would I would argue that I'm not argue, that I'm not arrogant. I, I hope that no one would see me that way. There's there's definitely a difference between being confident and being able to admit that, but also in being arrogant. But I think what keeps me from being perceived hopefully as arrogant is that I'm so vocal and so aware of my flaws. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. And I, I know that most things in life I'm not good at. I'm good at a few things. And even those things, I'm always trying to improve. So, how do you become confident without being arrogant? Map out what you're good at in life, what your skills and talents are. Make those part of your identity, but know that it's always, there's always room for improvement to even do those things better. And know that for most things, you're probably not that good at. You can become better at them, but you may never be good at most things like me, okay? Therefore, when I walk around in life, I'm not offended by people that I don't know or do know or that I'm close or not because I control my emotions like a breaker switch. I just keep the switch off. I have power over my own life by controlling my own emotions. It's a decision. Just like forgiveness, whatever offense has been committed in the history of the world against a person and a person says, I could never forgive them. I assure you that's happened to someone else and, and there's a person out there who is able to forgive that person for that. Same thing with letting people offend you. It's a choice. It's a difficult choice and it's, it's, a, it's a challenging process, but I've been living it. This has been my life and I gotta say, my life, I have so much freedom over my own life, over my own thoughts. It frees up so much of my brain, so much of my time, my creativity, because now I know that really, who actually needs to be in this wagon? The more people in this wagon, the more easily I can be offended. The more easily I can be insulted and hurt. And therefore, the easier it is to have a lower confidence level. So imagine if with me. I go around all day thinking, yep, I'm not perfect. I definitely know what I'm not good at. And the first person to say that I'm not good at something or imply that, I will instantly agree with them. You're right, because that's part of my identity, right? So really, who's in my wagon? Imagine what it must be like if you don't have the entire world in your wagon, an entire world at your disposal who can instantly offend you. What if it's the opposite where really no one's in this wagon? You control your own emotions because that's your choice. How do you be confident without being arrogant? You recognize what you're good at. You recognize that you can always become better at it. You realize most things are, are not your forte. You're not going to be good at them. And in general, you're not a good person. Because in that case, you're just as good as the person who is getting upset with you. And they think that they're a good person. So, I hope you have found help in this. This is something I'm very passionate about. I want other people to find the freedom that I have found. in being confident, but not arrogant. Just by taking control of your own emotions. Not letting other people offend you. Because knowing ultimately, I'm not a good person. I'm just aware of my flaws. And I'm aware of what I'm good good at the more that people emotionally control you the lower your confidence level it's a choice